this is going to be the first of two videos I'm going to do on the Key 84. We're just going to do a quick test flight here in Aces High 3. Um, I can't be bothered to grind my way up through War Thunder to get the Key 84 in War Thunder. I can't even do a test flight on it in War Thunder right now. Which is, you know, whatever. Anyway, the first time I was ever introduced to the Key 84, I would say, was probably in the game Warbirds. Which is what Aces High used to be before it was Aces High. It's a long story, but back around, I don't know, 99, 1999, 2000, they split off. They got bought out, basically. They got bought out by iMagic, I think it was. And they didn't like the direction they were going in, so they split off and started their own game called Aces High. But it's the same guys that had Warbirds before. And iMagic, I don't know, they've completely destroyed that game as far as I'm concerned. I migrated over with Aces High, and I stuck around for a couple of years, and then I just basically went and did my own thing for a while. Every so often I get back into Aces High just for a little while until i reminded about all the things that uh, I don't like about it. <laughs> and then I, then I give up again for a while. But anyway, graphics were recently overhauled in this game about three years ago. And while they're better than they used to be, they're still not up to the level of War Thunder or IL-2 or DCS or any of those other combat games that have an, a multiplayer component to them. But it's still better than it used to be, and it's not too bad. And the flight model's always been pretty good in this game, surprisingly. Don't go by the looks. Um, you know, 20 years ago, before IL-2 existed and everything else, all these other sims existed, this was the only game in town, and it had the best flight model by far of anything else out there, it, including all the civilian sims, everything, FSX, you name it, FS9, FS98, actually, yeah, we're going back to like 98, 99, 2000, so yeah, Flight Sim 98, Flight Sim 2000 at the time, 2002, you know, this was the, this really had the best flight model of anything out there, and it really hasn't changed over 20 years. And I mean, they've got a crap ton of airplanes in here that you can fly. Um, look at them all. <laughs> I mean, a lot of them are variants. You know, like how many 109s do you need? Anyway, a couple of World War I airplanes in there, Corsairs, 190s, everything. And they've also got into like ground vehicles and ships and stuff like that too in more recent years used to just be a, a flying game, but now it's kind of like a total war kind of thing. Because that's kind of the trend, right? That's the way War Thunder went. And that's the way that uh, other co competing games were going back in the day. So these guys did it too. Spitfires. Every, like There's tons of vehicles you can play with in this thing. We're going to focus on the Key 84 because I'm doing a video after this that's going to be uh, for geeks, people who like numbers, people who like history so this is pretty cool you can pull up a speed chart and yeah my next video is going to be talking about the performance of this airplane not necessarily in aces high but just in general in the real world so you can pull up some performance charts there you can compare airplanes I'm going to take 75% fuel, so our weight is about just over 7,900 pounds. We have two 20mm cannons and two 12.7mm machine guns. And there's a ton of liveries, ton of skins available for this plane too. As you can see, quite a few anyway. We're going to take this one, which I think, oh no, I've got the 47 Sente by Devil 505. Selected right now. All right, let's go. Here's the cockpit. Like I said, it doesn't. It's not up to par with the latest and greatest games out there. But now I've got this display here in the middle of the screen. You can see it. It shows the control surface positions, and you can see I have quite a bit of a of dampening built into it. 
it takes about one second to get the full deflection. I was a little quicker on the ailerons, but the elevator is about one second, one second, one second. And same with the rudder, one second, approximately. One second to full deflection. And I figure that kind of represents more realistic uh, control inputs because the inertia is pretty low on these models in this game. They feel like toys, actually, to me. They feel like RC airplanes, unless you put a lot of dampening in. Um, you know what? Just quickly, I'll just show you my control setups here. Why not? Uh, let's see if I can remember how to do this. Map controllers? No. Yes. Advanced. Uh, let's go to the advanced tab so I can show you. Wait a minute. Okay. Y axis. This is the elevator axis. So I do have a little bit of scaling here. I'm starting about halfway up down here and then just it's and then it's just linear up to there instead of straight across, you know, 100% across the board. Got a little bit of dampening in there. Not as not not a lot though, a little bit. Roll is just straight across the board. Dampening's about one third. Pitch dampening's about a half. A little bit of dead band. Uh, the rudder pedals, I've got, where is it? Rudder pe pedals are straight across with about half, halfway up dampening. You can see there. A little bit of dead band on the rudder as well. Probably not enough because, yeah, I probably could use a little more dead band on my rudder. But anyway, so that's how my controls are set up for airplanes. Now the other cool thing about this clipboard is you can pull up an E6B, which shows you your indicated speed, true speed, ground speed, Mach number, your weight, your climb rate, your fuel consumption, time remaining, range, all the stuff that you could probably figure out if you had a one of those E6B dead reckoning computers, which I have one right beside me, actually. It's my dad's. And I do use it sometimes. Power settings. External view, let's look at that. Let's go to pan mode. So, you know, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, you can't do things like open the canopy or cowl flaps or, or anything like that. There's no real engine management in that way. Quick look around the canopy or the, the cockpit. Uh, again, you know it's pretty primitive looking compared to modern standards, but we got a prop and a throttle over there. We got a rudder bar. We got a control stick. And let's go for a flight. So uh, in engine instruments. What do we have? We have boost gauge in the middle there. RPM to the left, rate of climb, turn and bank, airspeed, horizon, altitude, landing gear indicator, trim controls. They default to like a, a takeoff setting. So I've got like full right aileron trim in right now and by default. Anyway, let's fly this thing quickly. Let's do a little bit of a test flight. And I'll show you how it goes. We got tow brakes. And you can ground loop these airplanes too. They do tend to want to flip around. They're pretty easy to control though. They're not it's not like IL2 where you know they can get out of control pretty easily. These these are pretty easy to control, but at least they can go out of control if you're really not careful. Alright, let's go up to... Let's 
So we're going to hit 2,900 RPM with only about minus 10 on the boost there. I don't think that's realistic, but anyway, let's go. We need about half right rudder at the start of the roll. Easing off the rudder now. Easing off, tail comes up, pull back a bit, and we're off the ground. Hit the gear. to roll right because of the default trim setting, so I'll just put this. And when we hit about 160, I'll go Alt-X, that trims for climb. And the best climb speed is uh, set by default. I think it's like 162 or 63 on this airplane. Going to our E6B, we can check our climb rate. In this simulator, remember I took off at 7,900 pounds. I think our climb rate's a bit low here. Um, again, this is going to be a discussion in my next video. But this just goes to show you what how the sim performs. Now, if I if I kick the boost up to f up to 40 centimeters there, let's see what happens. of climb rate over 4,000 feet a minute 4,200 4,300 171 gallons an hour all right okay we're 6,000 feet let's do some turns so the roll rate check the roll rate out here at 160 we're Pretty quick. <laughs> Pretty fast roll rate at 160. I would say there's 200. That's pretty quick. All right, let's do some tight turns. Let's see what we get for turn rate. At 6,000 feet. I can try to maintain altitude here. It's a little tricky without any real horizon. It's kind of just fog out there, haze. I don't really have a reference line. But we're looking at 3Gs at 170. I can pull a little tighter. Come on, don't lose altitude. About 2.8 at 160, maybe. Come on. Can't keep from descending here. Doesn't help to not have a good horizon line. 2.7 at 165. 2.6 at 160. That's about it. I think if I pull any more, she's shuddering. She's going to go over. There she goes. Pull full back, it definitely spins, neutralize the controls, keeps spinning, opposite rudder, stops immediately. So it's pretty easy to recover from a spin, you just got to hit opposite rudder or push full down elevator or uh, you can even recover with aileron, believe it or not. I tried that the other day. So it will spin, it will snap and spin if you're not careful to the left. To the right, I don't know, but let's check the top speed out at sea level. Just do a dive down here. Head out for some open water. Let's hit X is our autopilot, so let's hit X for straight level flight. And let's see what it stabilizes at. I'm only at 25 centimeters of boost. That would be rated power. I'm going to throttle back here just to slow down a little quicker. 330. Let's try 330. Oh, 329. 27. 26. 
Netflix. I gotta watch these trees here in a second. May have to pull up a little bit here. Maybe not, but I'm not gonna risk it. So yeah, we'll just pull up just a hair. There we go. Just to get on the other side of this little island here. Make a little, little adjustment. Left turn. Okay, we'll level off here. 318. Okay, we're faster than 319. 320. Looks like it's going to be... Like about 325 with rated power. Okay, that's good to know. All right, let's zoom up. Let's zoom up and do a stall. What the hell? Let's just do like a. Let's do a complete nimble in here. Trim. And actually, I don't have enough trim authority at this speed. All right. So I got full up trim into it. A little bit of power on. You can just see my control position. So you can see how much elevator I have into it when it stalls. There's the warning. Now the real airplane was 102 miles an hour in the uh, American flight test. We're down to about 90. That wasn't very stable, so let me just stabilize this thing here a little bit more. About a four. Seven, about 97. 97 clean. And let me get the flaps down below 160, I think it was. Climb up a little bit. up with the flaps quite drastically, which I think is wrong for this airplane. I think the nose should actually go down. According to the flight test report that I read. Alright, let's throttle back. So 97 clean. It looks like 85 with full flaps. Yeah, let's say the 85. Okay. Put the gear down. for a landing here. Now 
one thing about this game, this simulator, is when you when you cut the throttle, these airplanes really drop out of the sky. <laughs> There's a lot of prop drag, maybe too much. Like I'm trimmed for like what 106 right there. So if I cut the power, watch what happens. Let's pull up the E6B. Look at our rate of descent. Wait till it stabilizes. It might not stabilize before I hit the ground, but let's just see if I can get it close. So I'm at idle right now. And yeah, our rate of descent is like over 3,000 feet a minute. Two hundred, thirty-three hundred, somewhere around there, thirty-three, thirty-two. And I'm just going to add some power and get out of this glide here. Yeah, there's a ton of drag there, whether it's from the flaps or gear propeller. I mean, I could do a bunch of drag tests or glide tests and figure it out, but I'm trying to keep this video somewhat short. Just to show you, now you can stretch the glide. If you pull the propeller lever back, that's what I wanted to show you, actually. I need to climb back up, though, so hang on a second. Let me get the flaps up so we can climb at a bit better rate here. show you what the glide looks like when you pull the prop or shut the engine off or pull the propeller control back. Actually, you know what I want to do? Get the gear up. I'm going to set my, my uh, trim speed to 200 and I don't know. 50 miles an hour, maybe. Yeah, so the autopilot puts the airplane in a dive to trim for 250. So I just want to show you what the cruise performance is like because uh, I picked 250 so that you have some maneuvering capability, you know, if you get jumped in the arena. want to be able to turn quickly or maneuver but you also want to try to save fuel because in the, in the main arena you're burning fuel at double I think it's double the normal rate so whereas right now I have an endurance of 50 minutes my multiplier is only one so in the arena it would be two so I'd be burning fuel twice as fast as I am right now right now I'm pulling the throttle and the prop controls back both together because that seems to give the best fuel economy like okay there's level flight what have I got there about zero boost and uh, or minus zero boost and about what two two thousand 300 or so something like that and let's go 2250 on the RPM yeah and about zero boost so that gives us 66 gallons an hour that's a nice cruise setting you know I can fly for almost two hours like this with uh you know, with realistic fuel burn here at a nice fast cruising speed. Now for maximum range, this is like a combat cruise, I would guess you, would, you could call it. If I went slow down to 200, which would be like a long range cruise, I could probably stretch it even further.
Veteran, for, let's get her powered up here for uh, level flight here at 200. Okay, we're looking at about 2,000 RPM and about minus, I don't know, minus 16 or 17 centimeters on the boost there. Let's say 15. Minus 15 and 2,000 gives us 46 gallons an hour. At 200 indicated. So that's pretty cool. That's a nice long cruise. You know, now I can fly for uh, 144 minutes <laughs> but we're not going to do that let's go back to where it went from whence we came and let's go back this way yeah okay actually what I wanted to show you was the glide Let's say you run out of fuel or you get shot, you know, you get your engine gets shot out or whatever. There's so many times that I've been able to glide back to a base by uh, stretching the glide out using this trick. I guess it's kind of a trick, I guess. I don't know if I just assume everybody knows about it already, but if you don't. Wait till I get closer to the base because then I'll show you. We're almost there. We're almost there. I got full power here. We're going as fast as we can. Kill the engine right now. I'm just gonna hit E and shut the engine off. Engine is off. Uh, I'm gonna let's set our speed to I don't know 130. That would be like a a gliding speed, right? Approximately. Approach speed, glide speed, whatever. We'll set it to 130, and let's see how it stabilizes. So what did we have before, like 3,200 or something feet a minute? I don't even have the gear and the flaps down right now. I just killed the engine. So yeah, we're looking at uh, 30, oh, 3,000 feet a minute anyways. So now if I pull the prop control right back, right, pull the RPM back, it's kind of like feathering the propeller. So you Pull the prop back all the way. Now what happens? Look at our rate of descent. Goes way up. We can stretch the glide huge from like 3,000 feet a minute to looks like maybe 1,200, 1,300 in a glide here. So let's say just pretend we ran out of fuel or our engine died or whatever and of course putting the gear down is going to add some drag and that's going to increase our glide 
you know, a couple few hundred feet a minute there for the landing gear. Flaps. Flaps are going to add a ton of drag. What are we at there now? 17, 1800 feet a minute. So there's another 500 feet a minute just from the first notch of flaps. Pull flaps. Go from 1600 feet a minute down to like 2400. That's a good 800 feet a minute from the second notch of flaps. So that's a lot of drag. And that's with the propeller feathered. So anyway, I got to turn the engine back on because we're not going to make the runway. So that's the key 84 in ACE's high three. I'm going to do a video talking about uh, the performance of this airplane in detail following this one. See you in a bit.